people are asking and they're wondering, is AI going to replace my pay-per-click company or my marketing agency, my SEO? And I think it's really important to drive that home that absolutely not. I mean, you said something interesting there, which was AI is here to enhance our work, not replace us. You're listening to Bluetooth, the home services podcast featuring the top owners, marketers, and operators across the trade, bringing contractors together to uncover real problems, provide real solutions, and push the trades forward. This is Bluetooth. Hey everybody, happy Monday. You're listening to Bluetube and I'm your host, Brandon Doyle. We got a really fun and exciting episode planned here. I'm joined by David Hamrick, Vice President of Client Accounts here at Blue Corona, as well as Eric Velez, Vice President of Client Services here at Blue Corona. Gentlemen, thanks for joining me. Happy to hang with you, Brandon. Can you believe it? I mean, we got a we got a podcast now. This is this is legit. I wanted to take a step back and really reflect on on 2023. You know, in the digital marketing space, a lot happened and and it'd be fair to say that a lot happens every year. I mean, we've all seen the stats. What is it? Google updates their organic algorithm like twice a day on average, right? It might not be the big core algorithm updates, but you know, they're making small tweaks. And last year, 2023 was no different. We saw a whole lot of things in the news, everything from Google's antitrust lawsuit to Microsoft uh, rolling out its Gen AI in the form of chat GBT on search engines. And so, you know, with with all of the um, attention on artificial intelligence and the use of AI, particularly amongst contractors and those in the trades, I mean, we see Service Titan building all sorts of tools, automated tools, right, to leverage AI. So I want to start on the topic of of AI or, or artificial intelligence. I just feel like we would be doing a disservice to our listeners if we didn't uh, start there uh, when talking about 2023. So so we're going to start there with, with AI, right? And again, we saw Google in response to uh, Microsoft rolling out its generative AI with, with ChatGBT on its search engine. So my cor- first question is for you, David, and Eric, jump in if if you need to. Um, but my first question for you, David, is, you know, is is AI in the trades really that new or have we seen it before? And, and if so, how? I mean, because everyone's talking about it. it's like an AI, it's, it's the next industrial revolution, if you will, right? The AI revolution. So, I mean, is it brand new to the trades or where have we seen this before? Yeah, that's a great question. And one where, you know, it dominated a lot of our conversations at Nextstar Super Meeting, at Service Titan Pantheon certainly throughout our annual planning. It's a very exciting and interesting time in automation and AI, like you mentioned. I think you know before we look forward, we would look back and say automation has been here in digital marketing in a few different forms and a few different names over the past few years. You know, Google's had some really powerful automated bidding tools and strategies for a couple of years now that are based on automated learning and machine learning. Uh, even things in our personal life that we've grown accustomed to. I was sending a note to someone on Gmail from my phone this morning, and it's been trying to finish those phrases and sentences for me for a while. So, you know, in general, at Blue Corona, we tend to say that those tools are only as good as the people who use them. It's our job to stay on top of trends, to see what's evolving, what's changing on the SERP, on the results page, um, but also understand what's going to advance us and move us forward. You know, how is Google's criteria changing? How can we use the new tools that are available to us uh, to take ourselves a couple steps further and meet those goals for our customers? David, you said something interesting there that it's taken many forms um, in the past. And I feel like we're at this point where people either love AI and they're all in on it, right? Like they're running their business or they're summarizing meeting notes and doing whatever with chat GBT, right? And then you have this other camp where everyone, it seems like, is is very much against it. Like we want the human element. And Google is kind of published mixed things, right? Saying we want helpful content that is written for humans by humans, kind of taking a dig at, you know, the AI tools. So, you know, with that in mind, I mean, is AI something that we should be afraid of? Should we, we be, be embracing it? I mean, how should contractors who maybe aren't using artificial intelligence tools today, not only in their marketing, but in their business, I mean, what should be their mindset when approaching something like AI, whether it be in marketing or just kind of using it in their business in general? I think we would encourage you to say it's not necessarily one or the other. I don't think you have to completely lose your human touch when you're identifying 
the tools that can make you better and smarter uh, without just replacing things that maybe shouldn't be replaced. You know, the input is only as good as the output. Uh, I've used ChatGPT to summarize some things for myself, some notes to prepare for this podcast. But, you know, for better or worse, for you, Brandon, it's still me who's got to stand here and deliver on it. I think it's it's my job to figure out how that fits into my workflow and not replaces my workflow. You know, my, my to-do list is always going to be pencil and paper, but there may be things that I'm able to clear in my day and my work more efficiently as a marketer. I would also say that's just as true, right? Automation can have some really powerful impacts for our customers. Maybe it makes your dispatching much better. Maybe it makes your call handling much more mm-hmm. robust. Maybe we're able to uh, get electronic invoices in customer hands much faster and shorten that sales cycle. So, you know, a lot of it depends on your CRM, your staff, your interests. But I think much like our own business and our personal life, we would we would encourage you to to find the tools that best complement and find true if sustainable efficiency in what you're doing, uh, and not just you know replace things or change things for the sake of changing them. How are we using, uh, we at Blue Corona, are we using AI in any way, whether that be to generate content or chatbot scheduling? You know, how are, are is the Blue Corona team using AI, uh, if at all? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that we we say around here is we're always looking for ways to do more, better, faster. That's the same that we would, you know, recommend for our, you know, our partners who are looking to grow their businesses is, the way we think about AI is how does it help drive efficiency for our operation? Certainly in things like content, but things like SEO, you know, these really serve to enhance, you know, uh, our operation today. So in many ways, these tools aren't taking over the work that we're doing, but they're helping us to, you know, better systematize, better streamline some of the work that we're doing, whether that's putting together templates, coming up with initial recommendations on keywords that we want to, you know, go out and target. You know, and the same thing you're seeing in other areas. So there's there's plenty that we're going to be due to uh, we're going to be doing to test, you know, AI, whether that's you know tools that or, or extensions that Google's uh, releasing, or things that we're doing to sort of enhance existing features like chat. You know, that's a big one where I think conversational chat has been you know attempted over a few years now. But you know, we're looking to see how we can further enhance our services to really drive value for the clients that we serve. You said something interesting there, which was AI is here to enhance our work, not replace us. Can you expand upon that? Because I think a lot of people are afraid of AI, particularly small to medium-sized business owners, contractors who may not want to share some of their revenue data or uh, customer data with, with Google or Google ads, so to speak. So why are people so hesitant to kind of dive into this? It's probably the pace at which new new updates are coming down the pipeline. You know, uh, it wasn't, you know, a couple of years ago that this really wasn't even part of what we were talking about on a daily basis. And, you know, it seems like at this point, we're getting updates almost hourly on the new release and this new thing that AI can do and this, you know, hundredth startup that now utilizes uh, chat GPT to solve the world's problems. You know, I think for us, it really comes down to what are the things that it allows us to do better. That's both process related, but it's also related to things where we might find value. You know, the reason why Google's coming out with extensions on their paid platform, things like Performance Max or, you know, Broadmatch, um, these are all ways just to see where can we find those honeypots of value that we've been looking for. So I think a lot of the hesitance comes from just there's a lot of information. And I think that overload of information means that a lot of the really good things that AI provides gets lost in some of that noise. But I think it's always about taking a really intentional approach to your testing plans. You know, what are the things that you think if you looked at your operation today that, you know, AI could help improve based on what you've heard about it and go out and try new strategies. I think that's a lot of what we're doing today with with even our clients is there are more questions than answers today. But I think that's really the exciting part of, of really understanding the power of AI and you know, how we can put it to good use and allow it to really serve as a, a complement to the work we do. You mentioned there's a lot of questions out there surrounding AI and not a lot of answers. So if someone is searching for those answers or at least doesn't even know where to start, who should a business owner be turning to to completely understand or try to start to understand the power of AI and how they should be using it, particularly in their marketing campaigns or in their marketing strategy? 
Yeah, I think I think you can go through a few different avenues. You know, I can speak to some of the ways that, you know, Blue Corona is helping support some of our clients is that, you know, we we meet with our clients pretty often and we're open to conversations about which things, you know, we think can help move the needle. Sometimes that's, you know, proactive on our end. Other times that's prompted by our customers or our clients who are looking for for ways to to drive performance for their business. So I think, you know, if, if you are partnering with, with an agency, you know, know that, you know, folks like us, we're kind of in the weeds on this, this stuff all day, every day. It excites us. It's the many ways, the reason why we wake up and, and do what we do is because of all the kind of new technologies and emerging things that are coming out. You know, other than that, I, I think it's helpful just to, you know, really explore and do and do research, you know, on your own and have conversations amongst your own teams, even in-house and, like I mentioned previously, I think there's there's a world where you can really just take a look at your operation and start with questions. You know, I'm sure we could all point to a thousand things in our operation that seem inefficient today and feel like they could be done better. Some of those things today might not be solved by artificial intelligence and may need another solution. But the question's there and it's just a matter of exploring, you know, and being you know curious about what's what's available. You said something, Eric, that stuck out to me. And and I think AI can be a great way to help customers get back to the basics or our customers, excuse me, help help contractors get back to the basics, right? You know, coming off of the COVID years, there were there were a couple calm unicorn years if you want, right? But business was booming for pretty much everybody across the country. And then, you know, 2023 hit and business wasn't as great for a lot of contractors across the country. And, you know, we've, some of our, our clients here at Blue Corona, plenty of them had really great home run type years, right? But not all of them did. And so, you know, I think AI can be a great way to help get back to the basics in terms of how, like what David said earlier, I mean, can it help us dispatch more efficiently or get the right text routed where we need to go? Is it a website chat service that's automatically following up and, and scheduling stuff or answering the phones? You know, we're seeing like AI powered CSRs out there. Um, there's been a few companies pop up that are looking into that and leveraging AI that way. So, you know, in something as simple as picking up the phone can do wonders for a business. And we all know that sitting on the phone, it's why we, we started our lead capture live solution, because it seems like when things get busy, after hours, just people forget to have a solution in place to pick up the phone. And it's it's getting back to those basics that can really make a big difference in you know your business year in and year out when you're focusing on the things so your your call conversion rates for your CSRs. You know you're you're focusing on your average ticket size for your technician and their conversion rates. Right those those things. Um, and if AI can help you do those things that incrementally improve, like those conversion rates, handle more calls, schedule jobs. You know I think that's something that why not take advantage of it? Yeah, I, I love the way that said, you know, things like IVRs and like we mentioned earlier, you know, even online, you know, chat platforms where you're having to feed it, you know, here are the three things you can select from. And I've got a baked in response at the end of that. So, you know, these things have, have always existed. This is sort of taking it to, you know, to the next level. And in some instances, you know, pumping it with steroids. So, you know, I, I love the way this is positioned to help, you know, pros because, in a lot of ways, if they just took the time to think about what it's really what it's doing, it's just further enhancing things that they've really been exposed to for years at this point. And David, what are some of the more common ways that you've seen contractors using AI in in the trades? You work with a ton of our clients, so I'm interested to hear kind of you know how they're using artificial intelligence in ways that maybe we're we're even not here at Blue Corona, or or how the market is responding to this. Yeah, I think one interesting place where I would start is the increase in use in online schedulers. I think if you have that properly integrated into your CRM, if your team is in lockstep and knows how to handle that, if your schedule is accurate, if you're reaching back out in a timely manner, uh, that's, a, you know, it's a phone call removed. It's booked right into your service Titan or your CRM. It can make people feel like you have that little bit of polish in your business. I think that's a common area there's also some interesting, you know, self-diagnostic tools on websites now, kind of build your own estimate or put your own problem together. Similarly, in the field, you know, there's more options than ever to generate those dynamic invoices and assumptions and turn it around. I got three quotes last week to replace my water heater downstairs. And I had everybody from our local natural gas provider. The guy was just 
standing there writing out the work order on a clipboard and then i had one guy showing me on the ipad just drag and dropping showing me the brand the expansion tank you know sort of similar to our earlier conversations where are the places where it can take your operation to the next level if you have a customer that's coming to your website and they like what they see enough to put their hand up and say i'm just going to book an appointment without even needing to talk to somebody on the phone i mean that is a a slow but steady sign of change in customer behavior. Phone call leads are still uh, the most common we see, but if you were to chart out the increase of scheduling, it's rapidly increasing, sometimes at the expense of your traditional contact form. And then you could also look to uh, the Google business profile change this fall, the one we discussed at Pantheon that brings that scheduling even a step further You know, it's kind of a crazy thought from a few years ago to now to say someone's comfortable going to your GBP, not just to get your phone number, but to book the appointment without ever actually going through to your website. Well, I think that's a big part. That's partly probably uh, because all of us millennials are growing up now, right? Like, and I I think that's one thing that a lot of contractors... We're old, I think, is the term you're looking for. Yeah, it's debatable. We're we're grown up. We're old. Yes, we're adults. We own homes and are hiring contractors ourselves. But, you know, there's people out there like my wife, for example, would never pick up the phone. Whether she's trying to order a pizza, we'd probably just DoorDash it. And I'm sure there's AI built in there somehow, right? But uh, whether we're ordering a pizza and wings on a Friday night with the kids or she's reaching out for the first time to we put on a, a patio edition uh, earlier this year and she she begrudgingly reached out to some contractors but she did everything in her power not to pick up the phone and call you know she was filling out forms she was chatting with probably ai power chat chat widgets right and and so she's one type of person where i am let me let me get straight to the source let me just pick up and call and i think a lot of contractors forget that there are so many ways out there to connect and engage and convert with their customers, homeowners in their area. David, you mentioned a few GBP. I mean, we got call extensions. There's GLSA, right? Which is a paper lead platform. So there's all of these ways. And I think the big takeaway here is, is to make sure that you're, you have the avenues to, to convert any visitor on your website that they want. You know, whether that be a web form, your your phone number up in the top right corner, or that be a a chat or call extensions on the search, uh, search results pages on Google and Microsoft. You know, you have to have those things out there um, because everyone's going to want to get in touch with you a different way. Let's transition a little bit to uh, 2024. And, and um, you know, I think a big thing or not, I think I know a, a big thing that a lot of customers come to us and David, I'm going to let you tell the story is a lot of contractors come to us and they think they've figured it out. They say, Hey, I'm, my leads are slow or I'm not getting the right types of leads. I need Facebook ads or like, I need you to redo my YouTube and, and run YouTube ads because that's going to get me leads. Right. And they, they, they've already jumped to the solution or in their mind, what the solution is where I think a lot of home service companies kind of miss the mark in in really optimizing what's available to them today and where customers are actively searching. So, you know, a long way to say that not everyone is really looking at Google or Microsoft or digital as a whole and saying, you know, we should be implementing a top-down holistic marketing strategy. It it tends to be very fragmented. David, uh, my question for you is, how frequent is it that it's, it seems like customers already have their next step figured out? And what is your response to that if you hear they're not doing something like Microsoft advertising, but they're spending thousands of dollars a month on Google ads and then want to make the jump to YouTube? I would say we always love when people reach out to us with questions. You know, we'll take an engaged customer conversation any day of the week, even if it's something that may not be what we would recommend initially. When we think about our holistic approach to supporting that customer's brand, to expand on what you said, we want to make sure the resources are allocated in the right place. That all starts from backing out the use case, where it sits on the marketing funnel. We will generally look to build a holistic program that is really housed on demand-based search as a foundation. Are we fishing where the fish are? Have we done everything we can? to be as visible on different points of the search page as possible. And just to answer the simple question, if a customer puts their hand up and says, I need AC repair, I need a ceiling fan installation, have we cared well enough to meet the customer where they're at? That's a short sales cycle. That's a need-based customer. They're ready to go. That's a conversation we want to be in. 
And then it's it's sort of conditional from there. Every plan is different, but once you have that demand base, that foundation cared for, you kind of start to look and say, okay, that's one segment of customers. What about the customers who, who like me with the water heater installation, right? I know I'm going to need it. I'm sort of dreading it, but I'm in that process where I've, I've got tabs open. I'm doing my homework. I'm looking at Reddit. I'm texting my friend who had one put in last year. I can't remember if I texted one of you guys about it. I might have, but you know, that customer, the customer who's further along in the consideration cycle, someone who we can pull based on their behavior, based on their online profile, potentially pull from that want-based customer to that need-based customer. And then from there, as you move further and further up the funnel, we want to start building in targeted brand awareness, try and get our name associated in the mind of that customer when it does come time for them to reach out. And in Blue Corona, it's also very important to us to track the post-conversion activity on any of these types of customers. What's your call close rate? What's your missed call rate? Are we set up to capture and convert the calls that are coming in? Because if we're missing one out of every five calls, or if we're only closing 15 to 20% of calls, then maybe more money in the marketing funnel isn't even the answer. And we need to look operationally to make sure we're maximizing what's coming in. Let's just talk about that for a second, David. Uh, you talked about if we're not maximizing what's coming in, then and you specifically mentioned the the call conversions. I mean, how big of a problem are missed calls like amongst contractors? Is I think I think you said like missing t- one out of every five calls, which would be twenty percent. Like, is that the average that you see, or are contractors by and large kind of missing more than twenty? Because that's like throwing twenty percent of your marketing budget out the window for every every call uh, that you that you uh, generate. So, I mean, what do you, what do you see? Yeah. And we'll define it quickly by Blue Corona's definition. When we say missed call, we are simply saying it is a live customer calling that did not reach an actual human to speak to. So if they got in the call queue and hung up, they reached the IVR and hung up, that just means they did not speak to an individual. I would say on average, we see about a 13 to 14% missed call rate for customers. We know that is it's never going to be zero you're going to have your robo calls, your repeat calls, your hangups. You want to leave a little bit of room for for that noise, but uh, even then our our best in class customers, people who are reliably able to get that number below 10%, you've spent money on the click. Maybe you've spent money on your marketing agency. You've spent money on your branding, on the CSR to feel that missed calls can be much more costly to the business because if that's a negative customer experience, you know, we can't guarantee that person's going to try you back again. We track repeat calls and we can actually see a pretty high exit rate of someone who tries you once isn't necessarily going to wait around to try you again if they've got water in the home or if it's unseasonably cold like it's been in North Carolina this week. I know Eric mentioned some furnace problems in his house a few years ago to me. I don't think in that situation with little kids, he was content to call a few times and not get somebody. I would guess he's just on to the next provider and he might know a few. Sounds like you need new neighborhoods or new houses or something. You, your water heater broke, David, and Eric, your furnace went this this week. No, it wasn't. It was a couple of years ago. So thankfully, oh, it's been running ago. running well now. But uh, but still, I, I worry about it every night, especially when we're hitting the teens. It's only a matter of time. But so far, we're in good shape. Nineteen years out of a tank water heater over here, so I got no complaints. We finally had to pay the piper on that one. I've somehow skated by six years of home ownership without having to. I've had to replace a, a furnace, not in this house, our previous house. But uh, we actually got a text from our previous homeowners uh, about a week after we moved. Um, this was a couple of years ago, and our water heater had just com- was completely shot. So I was very glad we moved about a, a week ahead of time. There, not jealous of you guys. <laughs> So David, what's the what's the right approach for crafting a winning marketing strategy? If we're talking about being visible wherever customers are interacting, there's a whole lot of things on Google people can click on. And we we keep talking Google because obviously they're the dominant player in the market, you know, with Microsoft coming in eight, maybe 12% market share in any given month, but usually right around that nine, 10% mark. So so what's the right approach? I mean, you have maps and, and Google business profiles on Google's first results page. You have organic traditional organic listings, pay-per-click, Yelp or Angie and all these kind of uh, directory websites. What's the right approach to know, hey, I'm advertising or at least I'm I'm testing a strategy and I'm in the right places where homeowners are looking? 
Brandon, I know you I know you called out David on this one, but I, I I've got a couple of comments if you don't mind me mind me sharing. Go for it. We talk about this a ton. You know, we just came out of our uh, our annual planning season where we're we're typically sitting with all of our clients and you know talking about our North Star. And I think it really all starts with that, right? You hear terms like outcome-based management or outcome-based, you know, strategy. And really what that means is, you know, what's the thing you're chasing? So you start off with here's here's the goal I'm trying to achieve. Maybe I'm I'm saying I'm going to go from 17 million in revenue in 2023 to to 20 million in in 2024. And here's what that means in terms of the margin I'm looking to generate. So you really start off with what you're chasing. And then at that point is really when you start to look at your marketing and your operations and you say, here are the things that I can do to both generate the demand that I need and be able to accomplish what I need to on the capacity side with the hands and the legs to get the work done. You know, a lot of the times, you know, I think what we see is that, you know, you you kind of put the cart before the horse when you say, hey, I, I, I think I should be testing out these five channels. And what you're really doing is you're shooting darts blindfolded, hoping that it hits, you know, some kind of bullseye. And I think in this case, if your initiatives, specifically your marketing initiatives align with your goals, really what that should introduce, as David was alluding to, is, okay, I've, I've got a really good handle on, you know, conversion channels that, you know, really do drive folks who are in need right now. I have a way to attract them. But uh, one of the interesting uh, notes we heard, we were at uh, at a Google conference late last year, and an interesting data point that came out was that you're three to four times more likely as a user to convert with a contractor if you've seen them uh, previously along your journey. And that doesn't mean I was actively searching for HVAC or AC replacement. That just means I recognize you because I saw you before. And that brand awareness then leads to further you know, conversions later on along that along that journey. So so, so that's took, actually really interesting Eric like where what are some of those strategies to to be visible like the contractors I might not be looking and or might not even notice in the moment that I saw that ad or heard that jingle where are some of the best ways that we're helping our clients connect like and and where are some of the ways that our listeners or or channels or strategies could do that to get their name yeah. in front of someone who is unsuspecting Absolutely. And, you know, today you see a lot of that still happening via traditional media uh, channels. So, you know, TV, radio and and outdoor billboards and advertising. You know, today we're experimenting with things like OTT. I say experimenting. It's a, a sort of a full fledged service that we offer. Today. Absolutely. Yes. We're, we're doing a, a ton of a ton of work on the paid social side. So things like Facebook, uh, Instagram, even some work on channels like you know, next door and others that, you know, really reach folks on that upper part of the funnel uh, before they're really ready to make a decision. Um, and we've seen tons of success, you know, later on as these folks are engaging with different channels to try you know, when they're ready to convert, you know, something's wrong with their system. Now they're ready. You know, as long as they have those touch points where they've engaged with this brand in other ways, even if it's that's trapped in their subconscious somewhere, you know, that sort of breeds you know, wins down the line many times. So, you know, we've we've done a lot of work over the last couple of years, really finding ways to meet folks before they're ready. You know, if, if I'm thinking back to even the, the conversation we were just having on, on AI, even the manufacturers are recognizing this as how can we utilize emerging technologies to get far ahead of the need? So everything is really pushing further towards being proactive as opposed to all competing at the same time to try and grab the same customer. I heard, um, I think it was Carrier at, we, we've talked Pantheon a lot today. Two years ago at Pantheon was talking to the chief digital officer at Carrier, whose booth was right across from ours. And he was telling me everything that, not everything, I'm sure he didn't disclose some trade secrets, of course, um, but he was telling me how the internet of things and being proactive and being able to identify when a customer needs assistance in their home because of a broken part, you know, or whatever is wrong, being able to troubleshoot that directly from the office and and get out there even before with the exact part replacement part or anything you need, which I know it hasn't necessarily hit, um, you know, our contractors yet, but it's coming, right? It's coming. Yeah. So that's where things are moving. I, ha I had an old mentor who read a book on IoT or Inter Internet of Things, you know, maybe eight, 10 years ago. And she came running out of her office and slammed the book on my desk and just said, this is the future. She was just so hyped up about it. And we're there. I think, you know, train, carrier, you know, really all the big HVAC OEMs are investing a ton in connected home 
and making sure again, you know, via your your system, you're basically being prompted when when something needs to happen. We're moving away from you hear as as crazy as it sounds, large language models. That's what things like ChatGPT is built on. And what those really do is they're meant to be more conversational, sort of point you to the thing you have to do. But you're starting to hear a lot more about large action models, which are, you know, how we're utilizing AI to sort of not just prompt you on what needs to get done, but do it for you. So, you know, I think that's a lot of what's ahead and that's what's on manufacturers' minds. And there's no way that can come to life without them partnering, you know, with dealer networks and and contractors directly, because they're the they're the hands and feet that are going to really you know, bring this technology, you know, to the forefront. So bringing it back to um, kind of the initial question then. So uh, for contractors who may be struggling to gain traction on the web uh, or whether that be organically or just, you know, their cost per lead is too high across paid search. Like, what do you recommend? Like, I'd, I'd like to leave our listeners with one big takeaway who might be sitting there and saying, hey, I got a marketing agency. I'm a little unhappy. Maybe it's results. Maybe it's relationships. I don't know. But they also don't know where to go next. And so when it comes to having success through digital marketing and on the web, if someone doesn't know where to start, what do you recommend, Eric or David? Where do you recommend they do start? Um, I'm going to guess it's with asking some questions to someone, but where do they start? I'd say simply put, you know, data is everything. You know, I think one of the things we haven't talked about much is, the fact that, you know, some of the things we're doing on the blue Corona side are really meant to build a thread between what's happening from your marketing activity down through your operation and what's really leading to value for your business. You know, this isn't just about, you know, again, throwing darts blindfolded. This is about being intentional about the things you're testing. And there's no better way to understand whether something is successful or not than really looking at the data to suggest where you should be investing more what you should be testing to drive this KPI for your business. And, you know, folks are, are are not alone in feeling like they're in the dark. You know, I think a lot of this is there's 20 different data sources. Where do I look first to really understand how things are performing? So I think, you know, first taking a look at, you know, which channels you have live today, how that's resulting down funnel in, you know, new sales, you know, what revenue attribution looks like. It really all starts with what story is the data telling and allowing that to help you drive you know, data, data-driven data decisions for your business. David, how many clients have you had uh, probably just pull a, a revenue number as a target for the following year, just kind of out of their out of their butt, so to seems, as opposed to backing into that number with through data, understanding what's, what's possible on the marketing side or what levers need to be pulled on marketing and operations. Is it pretty common to just get these unrealistic goals here, David, where contractors or a, a customer of ours might, might not have used the data to back into it? I would maybe say ambitious goals. We want to work, of course, with with the ambitious people. And uh, depending on who's supporting their business, they may have had some pretty ambitious goals assigned to them. I think some important questions, both for them and for us to understand in conversations like that are, you know, where have leads and revenue come from historically? How much of our revenue did digital marketing make up the last year? And what can we set our sights on as a realistic target you know, through some improved work, through some new channels, how can we help drive growth within our channel and maybe not say last year, digital marketing represented 30% of my leads this year, it's going to represent 80. You know, how can we set goals that are going to set sustainable year over year targets that keep us accountable as a provider to find new things, find more efficient ways to get to those goals and have them grow but also not just to say, hey, you know, it's, I'm going to expect something completely different from the digital landscape. Every market is different. Your levels of competition, how similar other providers are, the population demographic. Uh, we, what we want to do with everything in Blue Corona is be objective and use data to set a target. We hear some ambitious goals, but that means we work with ambitious people. And the best thing we can do is, is understand what data is available to show us where you've been. And then we can turn around and start to look forward and say where we think we can head together. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and uh, conclude this episode or this interview. So uh, you gentlemen have a have a good weekend. That was David Hamrick, Vice President of Client Accounts at Blue Corona, and Eric Velez, Vice President of Client Services at Blue Corona. And that's it, folks. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Bluetube. Next week, we have Patrick McIsaac, managing partner of Andrew Roby family of companies joining us to talk getting back to the marketing basics. 
See you next week.